Hey guys, in this video, we are going to see how to use FigJam. So before we do that, let's talk about FigJam and understand what we can use FigJam for. So basically, FigJam is a collaborative whiteboard that you and your team members can use for organizing your ideas. That's it. So let's go ahead and see how we can get started with FigJam. So log into your Figma account. I would log into my Figma account here. Now, when you log into your Figma account, the next thing to do is to create a FigJam file. And to do that, just come here and click on New FigJam File. When you do that, you have created a FigJam file. Now, after creating the FigJam file, the next thing to do is to name the FigJam file. And to do that, come here, click on Untitled here. When you click on it, it's going to be selected. Then press your backspace key to take out untitled. When that is cleared, type in the name of your choice. In this case, I would call mine FigJam main file. Then I would press the enter key on my keyboard to save this name as my FigJam files name. So that's that. So we have seen how to create a FigJam file and we have seen how to name the FigJam file. So let's understand how to use all of these FigJam tools that we have here. The first tool that I am going to talk about is the marker tool. And this is it. You can see where my mouse pointer is on. To use the marker tool, click on the marker tool. When you click on the marker tool, you would see colors that you can use for your marker lines. Now, let's come here and let's select red here. When I select red, it means that whatever line I draw with that marker will be red. Now, come here, you would see that we have these two properties here. When I hover on this, it says thick. And when I hover on this, it says thin. So these two properties are used to set the size of our marker lines. Currently, thin is what is selected. So if I come here on our FigJam whiteboard, and I click on it, hold it, and drag it around like this to have my drawing, you would see that my lines are thin. Now, I can come here and select thick. When I select thick, and I come here and I draw another line, you would see that the lines are thick, just like that. That's how to use the marker tool here in FigJam. So, the next tool that we are going to talk about is the move tool, and this is it. You can see where my mouse pointer is on. So the move tool is used to select and move items around the FigJam whiteboard. So to use the move tool, I would click on it to select it. When it is selected, I would use that to select any item here on my FigJam board. So let's say I want to select this item. I would click on it and you would see that there is a selection here. Now I can click on this selection, hold it and drag it around. As simple as that. Now, while this selection is on, you would notice that I have a tab here with two properties. Now, this first property here is a color property. I can use that property to change the color of my marker line. So I can click on it and change the color to this. And I can also come here and change the line style of my marker line. When I click on this, you would see that I have this set to thick. I can change this to thin, just like this. When I am done editing it, I would deselect the selection. And to deselect any item that you select on the FigJam whiteboard is simple. Just click on an empty portion of the FigJam whiteboard and you'd have that deselected. So that's how to use the move tool. Now let's talk about the hand tool. The hand tool is used to move around the FigJam whiteboard. Now don't confuse the hand tool for the move tool. The move tool is used to select objects and move the objects around the whiteboard. But the hand tool is not used to select. It's only used to move around the FigJam whiteboard. So let's select the hand tool here and let's see how to use it. So I would click on it to select it. Then I would click on my FigJam whiteboard, hold and drag around like this. Now you can see that I am using it to just move around my whiteboard like this. If I click on this line here, you would see that it's not selecting it. To select any item, you only have to use the move tool here. So that's that. Let's select the move tool, then come here, select this item, delete it. To delete an item, just select it, then press the delete key on your keyboard, just like that. So I'll delete this also. 
And now we are going to talk about the shape tools here in FigJam. So I would come here and I would click on this circle here to have all of these shapes come out. So if I want to use any of these shapes here, I'll just click on it. Let's click on this one here. When I click on it, i would come here on the FigJam whiteboard and i would click on it to have that shape there. Now, while the shape is there, the shape is selected and you can see that at the center of the shape, there is a blinking cursor there for text. So I can write anything I want inside this shape. When I'm done writing, i would click on the shape to go out of writing mode. So while this shape is still selected, I can come here on this property tab here. I can come here and I can change the color of our shape to this, or I can change it to this. Also, I can come here and I'll change the line style of this shape to this. And you can see that that line style property is only applicable to the sides of our shape. So i would come back here and i would keep it set to none, which is what we had before, just like that. So this property here can be used to swap the shapes. If I click on it, you would see that when I come here and I click on this circle here, our shape is now a circle. If I come here and I click on this rounded rectangle, you would see that our shape is now a rounded rectangle. Now, this here is used to make the text inside the shape to be bold. As you can see, as I clicked on it to select it, the text here became bold. Now, I would come back here and I would deselect it. And you can see that the text is back to normal. This property here will have a strike through effect on the text that we have inside this shape. So if I click on it to select it, you would see that we have this strike through effect on our text. So this next property here, let's deselect this. This next property here is used to add a hyperlink. If I click on it, you would see that I can paste a hyperlink here, just like that. So I would click on this shape to have that taken out. Now this next property is used to create a bulleted list style on our shape. So if I click on it to select it, you'd see that we have a bulleted list style here. I'll deselect it now. And we are going to talk about this alignment property. This property here is used to horizontally align the text in our shape. If I click on it, you'd see that I have this sub property that will align our text to the left. And I have this sub property that will align our text to the center. And I have this property here that will align our text to the right. Now we have the last property here, which is the font size property. If I click on it, currently it's set to normal. I can change this to subheading. I can change this to heading and I can change this to title. As easy as that. So I would click on our empty fig jam whiteboard to have this shape here deselected. Now, I would like to show you that you can resize any shape that you have here on your FigJam whiteboard. Come here first, select the move tool, then click on that shape. When you click on the shape, you can click on any side of the shape, hold it and drag it upwards like this or downwards like this. You can see this, you can see this, and you can see this. As easy as that. So that's that for the shape tools. Let's take this out and let's talk about the sticky note tool. This tool here is used to create sticky notes on our FigJam whiteboard. To use it, just click on it, then click on your FigJam whiteboard and you'd have a sticky note there. Now, when that sticky note is created, you'd have this property here, which can be used to change the color of the sticky notes. You have this here, which is going to make the text in your sticky notes to be bold. You have this property here that will create that strike through effect on your text. You have this hyperlink property here. You have this bulleted list property here. You have this font size property here. And the strange property that we have here is the show or hide author property. This property is used to show or hide the name of the person that created the sticky notes. Now, remember I said that FigJam is a collaborative tool. So it is possible that most times that you would work with FigJam, you will be working with teammates. So if you have other teammates working with you on the same project, having your name show up here as the author of any sticky notes you create always comes in handy. But if you don't want your name to show here, come here and click on this property here to hide your name, just like this. 
if you want your name to show up, click on it and your name is going to come back there. As simple as that. Now let's click on our empty Fig Jam whiteboard to have this here. So I can move this around also with the move tool. Don't forget that if you want to move items around, you can always do that using the move tool. So I'll select this and I'll delete it. And now we are going to talk about the next tool here, which is the text tool. This tool is used to create text. I would click on it to select it, then come here on our whiteboard and I would click on the whiteboard. When I click on the whiteboard, I can now type just like that. Now this property here is used to change the color of the text. This property here is used to make the text bold. But for this property to be effective, always ensure that you go out of typing mode. So to go out of typing mode, click outside the text box like this. Now you can see that the text is selected. So come here and click on this property to see it go into effect. I'll deselect it now. The next property here is the strike through property. We know what that does, yeah? So let's deselect that. This also is the hyperlink property. Let's deselect that. This here is the bulleted list property. This here is the alignment property. And this here is the font size property. So I would delete this and we are going to talk about the next tool here, which is the connector tool. This tool is used to create connections and flows. So let's say I have this rectangle here and I would say, and I would say UX PM. Let's reduce the size of this to subheading. I would say UX PM. I'll change the color of this to that. Then I'll have another rectangle here and I'll type in design stage. I'm just trying to create an example. I'll keep that there. I'll change the color to this and I'll keep it here. And let's say I have a sticky note here and this sticky note will be connect from API, just something like this. Let's keep this here. Let's come here. Let's reduce this and let's reduce the height of this. Let's come here. Let's have a circle here and let's change the color of a circle to this, to this. And let's say version flow. Let's keep this like this. Now let's keep this here keep this here and keep this here. So let's say I want to make sense out of this by creating a flow. What I'm going to do is I would use the connector tool here and to use it, just click on it. When you click on it, it's going to be selected. When it's selected, come here and you'd see that when you hover on any item, you'd have connection points show up. This is one connection point. This is one, this is one, and this is one here. So I can come here and click on any connection point, hold it and drag it to any other object or any other item that I am trying to connect it to. I can also come here, hold it and drag it to this point just like this. And when the connection line is created, you'd see that this property tab still shows up. So over here, I can change the color of the connector, just like this. I can also come here and change the line style by making it a dotted line or making it like this, or just keeping it as a straight line. So I would come here and I would set it to how it was before. Over here, we have the text tool for our connector. If I click on it, you would see that I would be able to have a text on our connector. So I can say, check flows here something like this. And that's that. So now that we have a text here, you would see that we have this bold property here that's going to make the text bold. And we have this strike through property here that will create that strike through effect. So I'll deselect this and I'll deselect this. So the next property here is the start point property. So this property will set a style for the start point of our line. If I click on it, and I come here and I select this solid arrow here, you would see that at the start point of our connector here, we have this arrow point. Now, this property here is the line shape property. If I click on it to deselect it, you would see that we don't have that curved line anymore. We have just a straight line here. So most times you would have this selected just like this. And the last property here is the end point property. If I click on it, you'd see that I'd be able to set a style for the end point of our connector. Let's say I want this triangle property here. When I click on it, you'd see that we have that style here. So still on the connector tool, when you have created a line like this using the connector tool, you can still come here, click on any of these blue points, hold it and drag it like this. You can come here, drag this down, just like this. You can drag any of these points 
like this. You can come here, drag this, just like this. So let's come here, let's select the connector tool once more. Come here, connect this circle to this rectangle. Then change the color to this. Come here, select the connector tool and connect it to this circle. Then change the color to this. I can also come here and connect this to this. And I can come here, click on this line and drag it upwards like this. Then change the color to this. So this is how to use the connector tool here in FigJam. And that's that for the connector tool. So let's look at the next tool that we have here. The next tool here is the library tool. Now this tool is used to access components that you can use here in FigJam. So I would come here and I would click on it. When I click on it, I would have this tab come out and I can come here and search for any component. I'll type in boss and you'd see that I have all of this. I can come here and type in mail and you'd see all of these components come up. So I can just come here, click on this component, hold it and grab it into my FigJam board, just like this. And I can increase the size. So you can come here and use any component at all from the component library of FigJam. As simple as that. The next tool here is the stamp tool. If I click on this tool, you would see that I have all of these stamps to use. So I can come here, click on this. When I click on it, I can drop it here. I can drop it here. I can drop it here. I can just drop it anywhere here in the FigJam board. So let's say I have a sticky note here. I can come here, have this stamp and just create a star there. I can come here, have this stamp and drop it there. So let's click on the stamp tool once more to see what we have. So all of these that we have here are options of this section of the stamp tool. If I come here and I click on this property here, you would see that we have new options here. Now, these options are animated options. Let's select one. Let's select this. Now let's come here and let's click on this sticky note. You would see that we just have animations of that emoji. Now, the next tool that we are going to look at is the place image tool. This tool is used to bring in images into the FigJam whiteboard. So let's click on it. When I click on it, you would see that I'm taken to my computer to search for the image that I am trying to bring into the FigJam whiteboard. So I can come here and let's have this image. So I can come here take a stamp and start the image, the image, or I can come here and I can create a text on the image, then change the color of the text to this. And that's our text there. I can also bring a sticky note and say, don't forget to replace with this image, just something like this. So that's that for the place image tool in FigJam. So the next tool I'm going to talk about is the add comment tool. Now, this tool is a collaborative tool that you can use to communicate with other team members here in FigJam. To use this tool, just click on it. When you click on it to select it, come here on your FigJam whiteboard, click on any space and you would have this here. Now you can type in anything you want to type in. Then come here, add an emoji then click on post when you click on post another of your team member can come here and reply this comment as simple as that when you are done come here and close this now the next tool that we are going to talk about is the cursor chat tool now to use the cursor chat tool right click on your figjam whiteboard and select cursor chat just like this now you can type in anything you can say i am just i am just checking it out now you can bring that and move around the whole FigJam whiteboard just like that. And after some seconds, it's going to disappear. Now the last tool I am going to talk about here in FigJam is the Zoom tool. Now here is the Zoom tool. You can see where my mouse pointer is on. Currently, my zoom level is set to 100%. To change that, I would click on that 100% there. And I'd have these options here. I can zoom to 200%. I can zoom out to 50%. I can come here. I can zoom to fit just like this. Or I can come in here and type in any zoom value that I want. I can come in here and I would say zoom to 120%. Then I would press the enter key on my keyboard. So that's how to use the zoom tool here in FigJam. Now, before we call it a wrap, I would like to say that for you to explore all of the powers of FigJam, 
come over here to your browser and type in help.figma.com. Then press the enter key on your keyboard. When you go to this page, come here and click on FigJam. When you click on FigJam, you would have the get started section here. You would have the create and edit section here and you'd have the collaborate section here. Now, these three sections has documentations and guides to how you can use FigJam as a power user. So let's explore one or two documentations to see how we can use it. So I would come here and I would click on see all nine articles under get started. And you would see that we have different documentations here on how to export your FigJam board, how to compare Figma and FigJam down to how to apply curated colors in FigJam. So let's say I want to see how to export my FigJam board. I would come here, I would click on this link here that says export your FigJam board. When I click on it, I would be taken to this page. So all you have to do is just carefully read the instructions and follow the instructions. As simple as that. So as you can see over here, it says when you and your team have finished a jam session in FigJam, we understand why you would want to save it and show the world what you made. FigJam lets you export your entire board as an image or your sticky notes to a CSV file. If I scroll down here under this section, which is the export entire file section, you'd see the steps that you can use to export your FigJam file. So it says click here, which is this logo here, this one here. When you click there, go to file and export as. So I would come here, click here, go to file and I would come here. I'd click on export as. Now, after that, it says select a file type if exporting as PNG or JPG, then select a background style. So I'd come here. Let's say I want to export mine as a PNG file. Then I would set my background to solid. Then for the export area, it's already set to entire file. Then I'd come here and I'd click on export just like this. And here I have it. Now, if I click on this exported file, which is a PNG file, you would see that I have this. This is an image. So that's how to export files out of FigJam. And we learned how to do that by coming here in this documentation and following these steps. So if you scroll down, you'd see that we have an export selection section. And right here, it says, if you only need to save a portion of your board, you can export a selection. So what you are going to do is to follow these steps. Select the items on the board that you want to export. Right click on your selection, then click on export selection. Select a file type if exporting as PNG or JPG, all of that and all of that. Then click on export. As simple as this. Let's say I want to export this sticky note here. I would click on it to select it, then right click on it. And I'd come here, I'd click on export selection. Then I'd select my export format, then click on export. As simple as that. So let's come back here and let's click on FigJam. And let's see the next section here, which is the create and edit section. Now this section, you would see how to import spreadsheet data to FigJam. Now let's come here. Let's click on see all 13 articles. Then you can see that we have all of these documentations here. So we have this lock and unlock object. That's really easy to understand. Let's say I want to keep this object locked to this position. All I'd have to do is right click on it and I'll click on lock forward slash unlock. Then it is locked. Now you'd see that I can't move this object out of this position. If I want to unlock it, I would right click on it and I would click this lock forward slash unlock option to unlock it. Now I can move it around as simple as that. Now let's come here and let's see other options here. So let's say you want to see how to build faster with quick create in FigJam. Click on it to see how it works. Scroll down and you'd see a demonstration here, something like this. So if you scroll down here, you'd see this keyboard shortcut section. It says, number one, add a sticky note to your board. Number two, press command and return. For Windows users, press control and enter. So let's come here and let's do that. I'll come here. Let's come up here. Let's have a sticky note here. 
let's make this yellow actually then let's hold down our control key if you are using a mac it's your command key then i would press the enter key on my keyboard if you are using a mac it's your return key now we have this i can do that again and you see that we are just creating sticky notes with that command now i can have this here and try that once more and it's working it's even creating this with a connector you can see it's creating this with a connector just like that i can have a rectangle here and you can see that it's even creating it with a connector i am still using the same command which is holding down my control key and pressing the enter key on my keyboard if you are using a mac it's your command key and your return key so this documentation here is really going to be helpful really really helpful let's come here and let's click on fig jam once more then let's scroll down to the collaborate section you can see that there is an option here to stay on track with the timer in FigJam. So if I click on it, so let's scroll down. Over here, it says a few things to know about the timer. Anyone in the file can start, pause, add time and stop the timer. You can set a timer up to 99 minutes and 59 seconds. There can only be one active timer per file. And during the countdown, time can be added but not reduced. That's okay. That's fine. So let's scroll down and let's see how to use the timer. So over here, it says to access the timer model, click on this icon here, which is this one, this one here. Click on this icon in the upper right corner of your FigJam file and select timer from the drop down. Now, once the timer is started, you can click on the X sign to hide the model and keep the timer running in the toolbar. So let's do that so that you can understand what they are trying to say there. I would come here, I would select timer and I can set this to, let's say to three seconds. Then when I set it to three seconds, I would come here and I would, and I would click on this button that says start timer and the countdown is going to start. And that's that. So I can still come here, click on the timer, then click on this X sign to have the timer run in the background. Now, over here, we have the start the timer section. It says to add time to the clock, type to enter the minute and seconds. We just saw how to do that. Then press the up arrow key or the down arrow key to adjust the time by a minute. So let's come here and let's see how that works. Let's have a timer here. Let's press our top arrow key now. Okay, that's working. That's working. So for you to come here, just bring your mouse here and click there. When it's highlighted like this, you can then use your arrow key to go up or come down. As simple as that. And let's see how to add time. Over here, it says if you or your team need to add more time, you can press the plus one minute in the modal to add one minute per click to the timer. So if I come here, I can click on this button here that says plus one minute to add one more minute to the timer simple as that so when you are comfortable with practicing all i have talked about in this video come over here to this help.figma.com page click on figjam and start from this get started section and click on every documentation link here and follow the steps that's been outlined in each documentation when you do that for all these three sections trust me there is nothing you won't understand in figjam so that's that for this video. If you like this content, don't forget to click on the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share.